What would you do if you met a mouse that could talk? Would you speak to it or would you run away? Well, hi there, Reader Adventure, and welcome to Storytime for Kids. I'm Mrs. McCurley, and today we are continuing with Chapter 2 of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, where we'll meet a talking mouse and have a swim in a pool of tears. <laughs> Let's get started. Chapter two of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll, The Pool of Tears. Curiouser and curiouser, cried Alice. She was so much surprised that for the moment she forgot how to speak good English. Now I'm, I'm opening up like the largest telescope there ever was. <gasps> Goodbye, feet! <gasps> For when she looked down at her feet, they seemed almost out of sight. They were getting so far off. Oh, my poor little feet, I wonder who will put on your shoes and socks. For I shan't be able to do it. I'm a great deal too far off to trouble myself, and you must manage the best way you can. <gasps> but I must be kind, thought Alice, or perhaps they won't walk the way I want them to go. Let me see. I'll give them a new pair of boots every year for Christmas. And she went on planning to herself how she would manage it. They must go by carrier, she thought. <laughs> and how funny it'll seem, sending presents to one owns feet. And how the directions should read. Alice's right foot, Esquire, hearth rock, near the fender, with Alice's love. <laughs> Dear, what nonsense I'm talking. And just then, her head <gasps> struck against the roof of the hall. <gasps> In fact, she was now more than nine feet high. <laughs> and she at once took up the little golden key and hurried off to the garden door. Poor Alice. It was as much as she could do, lying down on one side to look through to the garden with one eye. But to get through was more hopeless than ever. So she sat down and began to cry. <laughs> you ought to be ashamed of yourself, said Alice, a great girl like you, to go on crying this way. Stop this moment, I'll tell you. But she went on all the same, shedding gallons and gallons of tears until there was a large pool all around her, about four inches deep and reaching halfway down the hall. <gasps> After a time, she heard a little pattering of feet in the distance, and she hastily dried her eyes to see what was coming. It was the white rabbit, <laughs> returning splendidly dressed with a pair of white kid gloves in one hand and a large fan in the other. He came trotting along in a great hurry, muttering to himself as he came. Oh, the Duchess! Oh, the Duchess! Oh, won't she be savage if I've kept her waiting? Alice felt so desperate that she was ready to ask for help from anyone. So when the right rabbit came near her, she began in a low, timid voice. <clears throat> if you please, sir, the rabbit started violently, <gasps> dropped the white kid gloves and the fan, and scurried away into the darkness as hard as he could go. <gasps> Alice took up the fan and the gloves, and as the hall was very hot, she kept fanning herself with it all the time as she went on talking. Dear, dear, how, how queer everything is today. And yesterday, well, things just went on as usual. <clears throat> I wonder if I've been changed in the night. <gasps> Let me think. Was I the same as when I got up this morning? I almost think I can remember feeling a little differently. Hmm. But if I'm not the same, well, the next question is, who in the world am I? Ah, that's the great puzzle. And she began thinking over all the children she knew that were the same age as herself to see if she could have managed to have been changed into any of them. I'm sure I'm not Ada, she said, for her hair goes in such long ringlets, and, and mine doesn't go into ringlets at all. And I'm sure I'm not Mabel, <laughs> for I know all sorts of things, and 
Well, she, oh, she knows only a very little. Besides, she's she, and I'm I. And oh, how puzzling it all is. <sighs> if I try to know the things I used to know, let me see. Four times five is 12, and four times six is 13, and four oh. times seven's, oh dear, I shall never get to 20 at this rate. <sighs> However, the multiplication doesn't signify. Let's try geography. London is the capital of Paris, and Paris is the capital of Rome, and Rome, oh no, that's all wrong. I'm certain I must have been changed for Mabel. Oh, I'll try and say, how doth the little? And she crossed her hands on her lap, as if she were saying her lessons, and she began to repeat it. But her voice sounded hoarse and strange, and the words did not come the same as they used to. <clears throat> How doth the little crocodile improve his shining tail, and pour the waters of the Nile on every golden scale? How cheerfully he seems to grin, how neatly spread his claws, and welcome little fishes in with gently smiling jaws. Oh, I'm sure those are not the right words, said poor Alice, and her eyes filled with tears again as she went on. Oh, I must be Mabel after all, and I shall have to go and live in that, that pokey little house and have next to no toys to play with, and oh, so ever many lessons to learn. <sighs> no, I've made up my mind about it. If I'm Mabel, I'll just stay down here. It'll be no use their putting their heads down and saying, come up, dear. I shall only look up to them and say, well, who am I? Tell me that first. And if I like being that person, I'll come up. And if not, I'll stay down here until I'm somebody else. <sighs> but oh, dear, cried Alice with a sudden burst of tears. I do wish they would put their heads down. I'm so very tired of being down here all alone. As she said this, she looked down at her hands and was surprised to see that she had put on one of the rabbit's little kid gloves. How can I have done that, she thought. I must be growing small again. She got up and went to the table to measure herself by it and found that, as nearly as she could guess, she was now only about two feet high and was going on shrinking rapidly. She soon found out that the cause of this was the fan she was holding, and she dropped it hastily, just in time to avoid shrinking away altogether. That was a narrow escape said Alice, a good deal frightened at the sudden change, but very glad to find herself whew, still in existence. And now for the garden. And she ran with all her speed back to the little door. <gasps> but alas, the little door was shut again and the little golden key was lying on the glass table as before. And things are ever worse than ever, thought the poor child, for I never was so small as this before, ever. And I declare it's too bad. <laughs> it really is. As she said these words, her foot slipped, and in another moment, splash! She was up to her chin in salt water. Her first idea was she had somehow fallen into the sea. And in that case, I can go back by railway she said to herself. Alice had been to the seaside once in her life and had come to the general conclusion that wherever you go to on the English coast, you find a number of bathing machines in the sea, some children digging in the sand with wooden spades, then a row of lodging houses, and behind them, a railway house. However, she soon made out that she was in a pool of tears. <gasps> which she had wept when she was nine feet high. I wish I hadn't cried so much, said Alice, as she swam about trying to find her way out. 
I shall be punished for it now, I suppose, but being drowned in my own tears? Ugh, that will be a queer thing, to be sure. However, everything is queer today. Just then, she heard something splashing about in the pool a little way off. And as she swam nearer to it to make out what it was, at first she thought it must be mm, a walrus or a hippopotamus. <laughs> but then she remembered how small she was, and she soon made out that it was only a mouse that had slipped in, just like herself. Would it be of any use now, she thought Alice, to speak to that mouse? Everything's so out of the way down here that I should think very likely it can talk. At any rate, there's no harm in trying. So she began, <clears throat> Oh, mouse! Oh, Mouse, do you know the way out of this pool? I'm so very tired of swimming about here. Oh, Mouse. Alice thought this must be the right way of speaking to a mouse. She had never done such a thing before, but she remembered having seen in her brother's Latin grammar book, a mouse of a mouse to a mouse, oh, Mouse, oh, Mouse. The mouse looked at her rather inquisitively and seemed to her, to wink with one of its little eyes, but it said nothing. <clears throat> Perhaps it doesn't understand English, thought Alice. I dare say it's a French mouse. Come over with William the Conqueror. For with all of her knowledge of history, Alice had no very clear notion how long ago anything happened. <laughs> so she began, <clears throat> You ain't my shot which was the first sentence in her French lesson book. The mouse gave a sudden leap out of the water and seemed to quiver all over with fright. Oh, I beg your pardon, cried Alice hastily, afraid she had hurt the poor animal's feelings. I quite forgot you didn't like cats. Not like cats, cried the mouse in a shrill, passionate voice. Would you like cats if you were me? Well, perhaps not, said Alice in a soothing tone, but don't be angry about it. And yet I wish I could show you our cat, Dinah. <laughs> I think you'd fancy cats if you could only see her. She's such a dear, quiet little thing. And Alice went on, half to herself, as she swam lazily about in the pool. And she sits purring so nicely by the fire, licking her paws and, and washing her face. And she's such a nice, soft little thing to nurse. And she's such a capital one for catching mice. Oh, I beg your pardon, cried Alice again. For this time, the mouse was bristling all over. And she felt certain it must be really offended. We won't talk about her anymore, if you rather not. We indeed, cried the mouse, who was trembling down to the end of his tail, as if I would talk on such a subject. Our family always hated cats, nasty, low, vulgar things. Don't let me hear that name again. I won't, indeed, said Alice, in a great hurry to change the subject. Are you, are you fond of dogs? The mouse did not answer. So Alice went on eagerly. <laughs> There's such a nice little dog over by our house. I would like to show you a little bright-eyed terrier, you know? Oh, and, and when you throw things, he'll fetch them, and, and it'll, it'll beg for its dinner, and all sorts of things. <laughs> I can't remember half of them. And it belongs to a farmer, you know, and he says it's so useful. It's worth over a hundred pounds. He says it kills all the rats and, oh dear, cried Alice in a sorrowful tone. I'm afraid I've offended it again. For the mouse was swimming away from her as fast as it could go and making quite a commotion in the pool as it went. Mouse, dear, mouse, do come back and we won't talk about cats or dogs either if you don't want to. When the mouse heard this, it turned around and slowly swam back to her, its face quite pale with fear, Alice thought, and it said in a low, trembling voice, Let us get to the shore 
and then I'll tell you my history, and you'll understand why it is I hate cats and dogs. It was high time to go, for the pool was getting quite crowded with the birds and animals that had all fallen into it. There were a duck and a dodo, a lorry and an eaglet, and several other curious creatures. <laughs> Alice led the way, and the whole party swam to the shore. Wow! What did you think of chapter two? I think Alice needs to be a little bit more careful about what she says to that mouse. <laughs> be sure to join us next week for chapter three. And thanks for being a reader adventurer. Until our next video, happy story time. Bye.